Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dexterous Lifestyle Podcast with your co-hosts, Andy Hancock and Kelly Powell. Welcome, welcome, (laughs) welcome. (laughs) We have an incredible guest today, and I know I say that probably every time, but this time... I, we have an incredible guest. Not, not, um, and the reason why, and we'll talk more about it, is because um, she is a woman after my own heart in finding solutions for everyone mm-hmm. and not feel, feeling you don't have to feel like you're a messy person. And who are we talking about? Is your curiosity peaked? I hope it is. It is Cassandra Cass Arison of the Clutterbug. Welcome, Cass. Welcome, Hi. Cass. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. How are you guys doing? We're great and so excited to have you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited yes. to be here. <laughs> In a world filled with chaos, we try our best to create a balanced lifestyle. We love to be productive, but we also love to rest. We love to be efficient, but not at the cost of our peace. There is a direct correlation between our habits and our happiness. The dexterous lifestyle is meant for those of us who live hectic lives, but with the right tools, information, and resources, we can strive for order, peace, health, wealth, and calm. It's not too much to ask. We deserve a dexterous mind, a dexterous body, and plenty of dexterous spaces to support our dexterous lifestyle. Well, we encourage everyone to go to clutterbug.com because if you haven't um, been on the Cass Arson train or know what we're talking about, go to clutterbug.com, take the quiz, um, and she is offering our listeners a free organizing master class. Um, and what does that entail? It's me just working with you uh, in pre recorded videos. We help identify your organizing style, and then I show you like real life ways to declutter and real life ways to organize something. So you're like seeing me do it along with me, and you can watch it at your own pace. And just really get it like a like a 101 organization jumpstart to get you going. Sometimes we need that. We need a little bit of motivation, a little bit of confidence. That's what I'm hoping you learn from this. Yeah. And then just jumping in with both feet. Yes. That sounds no awesome. One's, yeah. Okay. Oh, no one's to tell you, this is you're doing this wrong. And I think that <laughs> that, that is the hugest thing I think a lot of people think organizers are going to come in and say yeah um like this is like we're personal i I, you know i sometimes use the analogy that we're personal trainers but only on the sense that you know some of us are drill sergeants and you know like crossfit some of us are more like yoga let's breathe and meditate and think about (laughs) what the next step is in a soft voice um and then you kind of pick the personality you want and it's so interesting that um some of our clients and in, in addition to um, this quiz that we really want them to take before we start to, you know, do the organizing part, um, is thinking about um, how tough or how how much pressure they need in order to let go. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a client who. Um, after her organizing session, reached out to me and was like, the organizers did great, but I f- don't feel light as I thought I would. And so, you know, the question is, so what do you, what could we have done differently? And basically, you know, we do the sorting up front and then we let them, once they see all their categories together, they can decide, oh, I have five black umbrellas. Maybe I should get rid of, you know, two or three. I don't need the five because now they've seen them all together. Um, But in her case, she needed more like hand holding during the letting go process and saying, do you really need, you know, 25 champagne glasses? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> answer is no, you don't. You so don't. the funny thing is she's she's given an inside joke here because I moved recently in the summer. And as I'm unpacking and unpacking and unpacking, and I called her or text her, can't remember which. And I'm like, I don't understand why I have 50 champagne flutes. <laughs> Can you please come get some of these? <laughs> I really don't. I didn't even know. I didn't even remember packing. That's, that's awesome, though. That's a lot. That's a lot. I don't even have one. So you must drink a lot. You celebrating. There's a lot to celebrate at your house. Dessert, I don't even like champagne. Okay. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Okay. Story, but guess what I promised <laughs> Champagne. Real oh, champagne. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's, our, that's our inside joke. Oh. Yeah, some clients do need a little bit more pushing. And then some you can't push too hard. That's the other thing I've yes. really found. At, you, you have to like yeah. gauge their anxiety level, right? But I do use the pack-up method a lot. And I'm going to say it's a lot with bees and crickets who are just not sure. They're not confident enough. They know that they don't need it, but they're not really confident enough to say, but it can leave my house because what if, oh my gosh, what if I make a mistake? And what if I do this wrong? And what if I regret it? And all those feelings. So I'm just like, you know what? We're going to put it in a box and we're going to say, if you haven't needed it in three or six months, then it can go, but I'm not putting it back in your space so that you have a really organized functional space. And that really does work, but I would never do that with a ladybug or a butterfly. I'm pushing them. I'm like, put it in the box because I know they won't even think about it. Once it's gone, it's like, they're like, something shiny over here. Like, it's fine. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's something that worked for us. My, my husband, who I think is a bee and me being a cricket, that's something we do every year we take down our clothes from the season and and as we're packing up the clothes from the current season if we haven't worn it we donate mm, nice. so it's like okay we made it through an entire season and we didn't care about it so let's let's let it go and that's just a rule that we made for ourselves because yeah it is hard for both of us we deliberate a lot <laughs> yeah i'm sure <laughs> I've had a lot of like bees and crickets say, can you just tell me exactly how many sweaters I need? And I'm like, oh, no, freaking no. Like, but they want, you know, rules. I want rules. And I'm just, that is not something you're going to hear from a butterfly or a ladybug, right? So it's so fascinating. It is so fascinating. Those little like subtleties in people's personality and, and how that translates to their belongings. Yeah. It's, and years ago, I remember because I'm a bee and I think logically, I was questioning the client about how often she, um, washed her towels because she lived in a one bedroom, had a very small linen closet and she had a lot of towels. And, and as I was asking her that she was just like, just tell me to throw them. Just tell me how many I need. Just tell me to throw them away. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I wasn't, <laughs> you know, her anxiety was really high that I was just trying to let her apart. I'm like, I'm just trying to understand how many you might need in your closet versus maybe how many you need rolled up in an open space. Uh, because if you don't do laundry often, you may need more towels. But if you do mm -hmm. laundry less often, I mean, I don't know. I know I'm off. If you do laundry more often, you need less towels. So, um, but that was the way, the logic I was trying to think. But just by asking the questions, it just set her off. Like, you're trying to you just, just tell me to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've also had some like I've learned some clients who, who are at the time maybe I was pressuring because I'm like oh you know that's crazy to have 50 champagne flutes like <laughs> you don't even drink it and then like a couple days later they'd be like well it is that a hundred percent left my house so there's like that lingering anxiety so these are things you just really you learn to pick up on those subtleties right you guys have been doing this a long time so I know you know what I mean but um all really important things to just know 
your client and know yourself. This is really just about self-awareness, understanding like what's going on up here so that I can really get this sorted for good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I've got some ladybug tendencies too. So I'm definitely a mixture. I can see that. And I see that in a lot of people. But I love that. I love the fact that you have it laid out in a way that's clear and understandable and people can see themselves and see themselves again. I'm going to reiterate without shame. They can look at it and say, ah, now this makes sense to me why I do this or why I don't do this or why I can't seem to do this, you know, Mm -hmm. and it just makes sense to them. It makes them feel like there's a group of my people that I belong to. (laughs) I love it. I love love it. it. Yes. So again, uh, so happy that you not only just had these epiphanies, but shared it with the world. Absolutely. Um, I know from um, the feedback you've gotten from the book and the reviews that you really have changed people's lives. And I can attest that, you know, I think professional organizers in great professional organizers help change people's lives. But the ones who really, like you said, bring self-awareness take away the shame and help people empower people to um, find how they think and then moving forward to their organizing style so that they can be sustainably organized. I think we are the ones that just really, really, really change people's lives. And um, so I'm, I'm happy that, um, yeah, you've made this the book and and had so much success with getting the message out thank you yeah it's um i'm still surprised sometimes you know it's still <laughs> like a i'm like oh, it's cool it's awesome uh, it, it, but it is something that i like invented i just something i happen to notice right mm-hmm. and, um sure. through a lot of experience and and yeah it you can't put everybody into four categories, but I know for myself, when my husband's like, why are all your bathroom drawers like looking like you just all your bathroom? Cause I'm a ladybug. (laughs) (laughs) To look like that. Let your ladybug flag fly. (laughs) Right. I stop. It's just, it's, it's empowering. It is empowering. And I no longer feel like there's something wrong with me. And to me, I know where it is and I can find it and I can put it away fast and it's always staying tidy. And that is the only thing that matters. You are not going to find a space in my house that you could take a picture of and put on Pinterest and someone would say, look at that. Uh, But that's fine. Like, except the space behind you. Stop it. I know. You know why it looks like this? Let me tell you. That's, it's a little crickety here up in there. But um, I don't touch this stuff. I don't touch this stuff every day. So yeah, yeah. anyone can maintain a space that you're occasionally using. I'm talking about those high traffic everyday stuff I touch areas. If I need like a doula tang or a binder or something out of here, I can keep that tidy. I can lift a lid because I'm only touching it maybe once a week. But if I'm touching a space every single day, all day long, I can't have a lid. I can't unstack. I won't. I'll set it beside. I'll set it on top. Um, but I know that about myself now. And I give my per- myself permission to set up systems that catch that clutter so I'm not just leaving it in a pile. And that is why, honestly, like my house is always tidy despite the fact that I am not a naturally tidy person. It's because I've created systems to catch where I put down. Mm -hmm. Love it. Absolutely. Well, I know you don't feel like a genius, but, and I, I will say that, you know, it's one thing to experience something and then kind of have it innate. And it's another thing to be able to uh, have the skill to express it so that other people can relate and understand. So um, I'm, I'm just celebrating that you know, um, skill set that you've had to be able to, and then the courage to put, make a book, write a book. I mean, like all of that, it needs to be celebrated um, because, you know, that's one of the things that kind of kept me 
um, in the organizing industry when, you know, I felt like, uh, I'm not doing as good as so-and-so and I don't have a lot of Instagram followers <sighs> is, <laughs> is, but I'm helping people and, you know, you get those reviews and you get those, um, though that feedback from the client after it's just like, this is why I do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, so to, to, you know, for, again, to have that courage to, to write the book, even, you know, um, even if no one, not no one, we want people to read it. But, but even like, if no one reads it, no, that's, that is true. Yeah. Even if yeah. no one freaking reads it because you're doing these things for yourself. So I have this like mantra, this is, I take this spaghetti approach to life, which is like I throw a bunch of pasta at the wall and some of them stick, most of them fall off, but the ones that stick are the only ones that matter. And mm. so I try to never say no to anything. Is that bonkers? Probably, but anytime an opportunity comes in, the scarier it is, the more I feel like I'm gonna poop my pants, the more I know that's a big <laughs> yes. I yes. like I, I will do that. I don't want to do that. I will I but I'm going to say yes and I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to jump in with both feet and learn to swim while I'm drowning. And um it's 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 been successful for me to do that. It's like that turning off like I don't overthink. Maybe it's because I'm a ladybug and I don't overthink. It's probably that. It's <laughs> it's probably that. I love that. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I do too. I don't think enough. I don't think enough. But, yeah, I um, think there was there's the quote there that success is um, found outside of our comfort zone. Yeah, or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> the general idea of that. Yes. Yeah, I'm but there's also for... never a top of the mountain. Like I, I just think. I'm always, I, I'm so guilty of always like looking at other people and saying, oh, my Instagram sucks compared to theirs and I don't have enough of this and I don't have enough of I, I fell into that trap for so long. But it's, what's crazy is when you turn around and look where you were yesterday, you're so much further ahead. Like I can't compare myself to other people. I will never, never compete or find joy in that. So I try to stay off social media. Isn't that bonkers? Like I do this for a living, but I, I don't watch other people's YouTube videos. I'm not on Instagram looking at these other beautiful things. I don't watch the home edit on Netflix because I'm going to just feel, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to like, now I can't help but compare and comparison is the thief of joy. So I'm just staying in my lane, keeping my little blinders on and really oblivious to what other people are doing and maybe that's not super great in this industry but it 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 makes me happy yeah to just worry i'm only comparing myself to the person i was yesterday mm -hmm. and i can relate when i stopped doing the comparison my business did better and i felt better <laughs> and when you feel better you do better so it's like and you do better for the reason why you're doing it. And so that goes back to your why and helping others and changing their lives was my why. So when you're, you talked about doing things that poop your pants, you know, <laughs> I mean, well, that didn't come out right. Doing things that make you feel like you want to poop your pants. <laughs> yeah. You said it, not me. <laughs> No, it's true. It's true. And also, like, you're going to mess up. So, like, the first book I put out, listen, I had an editor. I hired somebody. I am not a great writer. Uh, the first couple of feedbacks that I got, it like, we published 200 copy, 200,000 copies or something of my first book, right? So this is printed. You got printed in paper. We were overambitious. Uh, the publisher, riddled with spelling mistakes. So many spelling mistakes. And here's the thing. I have two options. I could go, oh, why didn't I spend more time? Why did I do this? How did the editors not catch that? Oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. Do I dump all these? Do I start again? Or I'm just like, meh, what am I working on next? Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> you can't do Who yeah. cares? Who yes. cares about all those little mistakes? And it's that worry about everything being perfect and trying to make sure that everything's the best it can possibly be that really is kind of like the roadblock to success because we're devoting way too much time to polishing this when we could be creating all of this. Yeah. So I don't know why we're talking about this, but this is like my I'm getting older. I have these words of wisdom now from my from my old age. But um I love it. Yeah. 
I'm I'm proud that that book is out. And yeah, I wish it didn't have spelling mistakes, but it does. But it's also this is a real lesson in there because if I was going to like nitpick and go over it, I might never have released it in the first place, which wouldn't I wouldn't have a second book and a third and a fourth. Um, so it's okay to do things kind of crappy sometimes. So it's okay to like embrace that anti-perfectionist mindset sometimes. Yes, 110%. Um, something you said resonated with me um, and it just went, left my brain. So we'll edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> you said so many things that resonate. I, I was thinking I back to your point about uh, comparison and that being, I, the phrase I use is comparison is the thief to contentment. I think you said the thief to joy and uh, the same meaning, but the, I think that the crux of that is the fact that we can't be authentically ourselves if we're always comparing and trying to measure up to someone else, you know? And I think that again, why we love you so much and, and the message that you have because it lets you be yourself, your authentic self and find your success within that, within who you are right now. And you continue to grow and we continue to, you know, put ourselves in those uncomfortable situations that make us stretch, but that's for growth not to shove us in a box where we don't fit. So mm -hmm. there's a difference, right? In in the level of discomfort and, and even the, the purpose of the discomfort, not to conform, to grow. To and grow. that's where that authenticity comes out and you flourish and then you're doing all and I think, beautiful things yeah, and, what you're doing. <laughs> and one of the best, most uncomfortable situations that a person can put themselves in is decluttering their home. That's that true. is so unfreaking comfortable. Yes. De owning the your stuff. That's it. It's, that vulnerability. It's so emotional. It's so mm -hmm. like, and I love Joshua Becker now talks about decluttering as de owning. So we're not just tidying, mm -hmm. we're not just, we are de owning. You're making a, a conscious decision like you're being mindful to de-own these objects and it hurts and it's scary and it feels awful and it's amazingly worth it and on the other side of all that fear and that anxiety and that worry is like ah yeah. man, I feel great. I have more time. I have more energy. My house looks better. It's easier to take care of. Let's rinse and repeat that until we get to a place where our house feels in control and then we can really organize it. So, I mean, if you, if you're listening to this podcast or you're watching this on YouTube and you're like, what can I do today? That's going to put me forward in my life. That's going to get me closer to the person and the like have the home I deserve. It's fill bags and boxes. De own things today. Oh, I love it. I think that's a perfect seal to, to this conversation. Wonderful book end. It's like a glass of champagne. <laughs> She's never going to let me forget. You see, this is why people don't want to be vulnerable. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, I love it. Yourself, what can you laugh at? <laughs> Thank you so much, Cass, for joining us. Um, you have definitely given people um, um, a way to figure out who they are, how they think, um, and navigate that in a way that's detaching the shame around maybe feeling that they're not measuring up to a standard of organization that um, society puts out. But um, finding what you need when you need it is the crux, how it looks, doesn't matter. And putting away and finding your things um, all help you have a more dexterous, dexterous lifestyle. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for having me. I have loved being here and hopefully we can get together again soon in the future. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs>